hills and build them high Makes a long time climbing before I die I want the chance Hello, welcome to Long Bangers in association with Leith Spirits I am Colin, your host, and I'm joined tonight by Am I? And John <laughs> And I say tonight, but obviously you'll be listening to this probably in the morning Or wherever the fuck you're listening to it so. um, How are you two? Uh, probably better than I could have been, Colin. Uh, uh-huh. Two goals away from a raging bad mood, uh, whereas now it's just a simmering hump. All right, we'll find out why shortly. John, are you okay? I am good. It's been it's been a hectic day. we are looking after the wee one, and I think she was maybe a wee bit tired still for nursery yesterday. So it's been it's not quite tantrum central, but everything I've asked her, it's been no. Do you want a drink? No. Do you want to watch TV? Just no. Just to start it, mate. Has she been having the tantrums no. as well, John, or is it just yourself? Just, oh, I was kicking and screaming and stamping my feet. Aye. Good stuff. I think you were the only one. Um, I've not seen any of the game, which is why I'm hosting. So, uh, I've had a busy day standing on a football touchline for, for two matches today, um, and none of them were hibs. So, um, I am going to just ask the question, and you can tell me all about it, because I know fucking basically nothing about the game, right? So... I'm looking forward to learning all about it. Um, but the day started off with a signing. So, somebody want to tell me who the boy is, where we got him from, what's he like? Yes, he is uh, Nathan Mariah Welsh. I think I've pronounced that right. Signed from Bournemouth on a permanent deal, uh, which is right. interesting because I think the the presumption would have been anybody coming from Bournemouth would have been a, a loan signing. But I've got a wee theory on that uh, right. in, a, in a second that I shall share. Uh, John, do you know much about him? Nothing. I was going to ask you what your thoughts were on uh, Lewis Wiltshire contacting us on Twitter to say that he found it amusing that football hadn't found another word for permanent when it came to signing because we've not got him for for eternity. What is it? I, I don't even know how long the deal is. To be fair, like the whole the whole signing has sort of passed me by. I just purely by chance earlier on today, around about two o'clock actually, when I was looking for the lineup. <clears throat> I was on WhatsApp and I saw that there'd been a wee update from the Hibs channel. I was like, oh, we've signed something. And that's about as much as I know. I, I know the boy's name. And I saw that the, one of our listeners, a guy called uh, Chris Finn, had uh, made quite a, an amusing an amusing joke on Twitter about the boy's name. What, what position is this guy? Is he a midfielder? Is that midfielder, right? aye. Um, See, he has been out on loan. I'm just trying to find the the uh, TV article for Hibs about it because it, it had had been rumoured to kind of um, be announced yesterday. And I don't know if that's like a wee thing. Hibs have Hibs have done whatever you know, the first did it with Martin Boyle. Remember when he came back and they, they announced the sign in, and then he was straining the squad for Hearts and kind of they they played down that he would be involved. And then again today we announced this just before kick off, and then uh, he was in the squad. Um, He's been on loan at Newport County. Yeah, it's a two and a half year deal with a, a, an option to extend for another year. I thought about this, right? So see, there's, there's a bit more news about Bill Foley, which is my favourite subject, I think. Um, overnight, the uh, the papers were reporting that the, the SFA have given the nod to the deal when Hibs expect to announce it next week. Um, and I think if they, if they do that, watch out for a, a wee live episode from us uh, to react to that. Everybody has a wee teaser there. Um I was thinking, right, Foley's plans, if you listen to them, are to have players uh, go through either Australia, Scotland, France or Belgium before eventually finding themselves at, at Bournemouth. But the player's got a part to play in that, right? So see if you're signing a player and saying, right, are you, I'm going to give you like a five-year deal at Bournemouth, but for three years you're going to be kicking about the world, like trying these different leagues to develop. And then you've got like the rules about how many players can be on loan and things like that. Or do you think they do things like, well, you're going to sign the Hibs for two years and then we do like a really early pre-contract agreement. So you're actually kind of, we've got an agreement in place that after those two years that you spent at Hibs, you're going to go to Bournemouth. Do you know when you're at the end of contracts, you didn't know necessarily a transfer fee or anything like that, but because Bournemouth are, are covering the, you know, however much of the cost of that and that fully might fund the, uh, the, the transfer. But it's, it saves some like the financial fair play th- issues that, that Bournemouth might have. Because on paper, there's no way that we should have been getting this boy by look at on a permanent deal. On a loan, might have been uh, reasonable. 
Um, but they were talking about loads of other English clubs that were, you now Hibs are bad for hyping things up. But a lot, of, a lot of talk of other English clubs looking to get uh, to get them where you would expect he would earn more money. But I have a wee feeling that Bournemouth might still retain an interest in him. Aye, so, right, I get a bit of logic there. However, would a player be daft enough to, to do that? Because they could come here for two years or two and a half plus a year option, which is our option or his option? But our option, yeah. Our option. So three and a half years. Um, if he's if he's good. If he was going to get a five-year contract at Bournemouth and he's shite here and he's only getting a two and a half-year contract, why would you sign him? Well, that's what's talking about. Tees. Football clubs are fucking ruthless for that. Aye, you know, that's what's talking about. The, 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 where the pre-contract comes into it, because you wouldn't have to announce that. You wouldn't have to make it known that that's the that's the arrangement. So I'm just trying to think, like, because well, oh, yeah, they've already signed a pre-contract to sign him in two and a half years' time. Potentially, three and a half years. I, I, I would say that's what's happened, but I was I was trying to think of how it would work, like, because otherwise it's a big risk if 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 um. But any player, if Hibs are signing them permanent, so or or Auckland or uh, Lorient, um, or whoever the Belgium team uh, ends up to, uh, being that fully takes over, if the clubs, if that club owns a contract, they are under no legal obligation to sell the player to Bournemouth when the time's right. So, if it was an exceptional player and a a a bigger team than Bournemouth came in for them, then. It, it, you have that sort of conflict interest. So for Foley to protect his interests and Bournemouth to protect their interests, they're going to have to have some sort of arrangement in place, you would think. Yeah. yeah. Okay, right. Thanks, Vince. Nice. So Sorry, enough. anyway, I'm just, I'm just um, fucking thinking out loud there with that. But it does kind of lead us into the team because he was on the bench, like you say. So it looks to me, looks to me here, right, correct me if I'm wrong, two changes for the starting lineup from Wednesday night. Van Linen and Marcondes in. Looks to be the two changes for the team. What was your thoughts when you saw that, John? I had a, I was a wee bit surprised because I'd heard a, a suggestion that Hanlon was on his way to Wraith Rollers, and, and looking back, I don't know whether that was just a wind up or not. But yeah, he was back in the squad, and seeing Emiliano there, I was trying to work out what position he might play, and I, I kind of settled on that he'd be partnering Vente up front, which didn't he actually. That's not exactly how it played out during the game. But otherwise, I was fairly all right with the, the starting lineup. And I think with some of the challenges that we've discussed recently, it was probably like the team roughly picked itself. Yeah. And and um, Matthew, are you the same there? And what, what was the formation? Because I'm looking at the BBC and they've kind of lined up a 4 2 3 1. I don't know what the formation was. Or, or, honestly, yeah. he, he came up with like it's the, just the, the topic, it's a topic though, isn't it? We talk about it all the time on Twitter, that's all we see. Tibbs.net, 4 4 4 doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. BBC are still saying 4 2 3 1, but you're yep. saying you don't know. Well, we were definitely have a flat back four, right? So you're sort of traditional flat back four um, with, with two full backs, two centre halves. Uh, Newell and Levitt played central. You had uh, Jair and uh, Yuan on the wings, and and I suppose Emiliano was the the wild card because he 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 didn't really stay in one position. He was popping up all over the place. So he was coming deep, but he was also quite high up the pitch at times as well. Um, but then the same could be said for uh, for Vente. Uh, he was he was back quite a lot as well. So I I think it was it was based on a four four two, but there was a lot of fluidity within that. Yeah. All right, so somebody want to talk through the first half? Hey, I'll start with you this time, Matthew. Ah, so the first half, it started brilliant. I thought, I say brilliant, we started really well. Uh, Emiliano had some great touches, early doors, like he, he just came to a couple of wee turns and flicks and picking up the ball in good positions. We were moving the ball well, we were getting into good positions. Again, a bit, of, a bit of an issue with the decision making and the, the quality of the final ball meant that we never troubled their goalie in that time, which is disappointing because when you're so much on top, and I thought we really were on top at that point, you need to be making it count. And we just yeah. looked like we didn't really have a like a good enough idea of how to score uh, score a goal. Then we conceded a, a soft goal, a soft goal, but I think it should have been a foul. Um, so tell me about the goal. What was it? What happened? Uh, John, do you want to take the goal? You can, 
I, I, you can, I, I, I asked him. You need fucking interrupt. Look at him. Yeah. Back can in help his <laughs> Obviously, because of the, the time of recording, I've only seen it once. I've not seen any replays or anything back. I just remember it was like, it was. I think one of the things that Kamala did pretty well was they got the ball wide quickly and they got balls into the box. And that's pretty much how they scored, if memory serves me correctly. Uh, ball goes over. And I think, was it Vassell jumped for it? But actually, it came off empty. It was a really good finish. I, I described it as the no-look Dodge finish. Because he wasn't looking goal words and it's ended up in the back of the net. Uh, but so and, so I have seen that clip on Twitter. So but only the clip. So what why is Venti in there in that position? Was it a, was it a corner? It wasn't for a corner. Uh, it was, it was a, there was a corner was. in the uh, so everybody was back for the corner just before it. Right. Um okay. he, I, I think so he's still back defending the back post. Yeah. Yuan and Emiliano and he, should have done better stopping the cross coming. I mean, I think what Yuan when you look at what he's done, he actually kinda of runs in uh to the, the sort of the space where you would expect him to be blocking the cross, but but decides to mark Emiliano for some reason rather than make an attempt to challenge for the ball or stop the cross. Any hint, John, it being a foul on Venti? Did DR look at it or anything? Do we know? I think there was a, a VR review. I can't, like, I can't remember this exactly. They review every goal. They do review yeah. every goal, but it's, you know if it's a close one by how long it takes. Yeah. Um... I well, I, I, I want to pass this over to Matty because I know that he's got his own thoughts on it. And he, he talked about it earlier. I I didn't think it was a foul. However, I'll let Matty take the the opposing view. So, when I first watched it, I thought might be a foul, might no. And then I compared it to Wednesday night. Hibs at the penalty shout uh, in the was it in the first half. The ball comes uh, comes into Vente. Uh, defender's got a bit of hoodie, his shirt, Venti's got his hands on the, the Rangers player, heads it, comes off the hand of the, the, the other Rangers defender, and the referee gives him a foul for uh, presumably the push for, uh, for Venti. Uh, Venti. If you compare the contact of Venti on the Rangers defender with the contact of Vassell on Venti in this situation, it's like three times more today than it was on, on Wednesday. So, they were both reviewed by VAR. They both of them because they checked it for uh, the, the potential penalty shout. So I I, just, I get confused. Was, why is one a foul and the other one no? And why have they both gone against us? Like I I, I kind of get paranoid about these sorts of things. But Venny kind of jumped for the ball. He's like bundled down. The boys got yeah. both hands over the top of him. It's so, it's a foul as far as I'm concerned. Admittedly, on a grainy Twitter link. A link on Twitter on my phone. It looked, I thought the boys over the back end, and I never equated it to that one the other day, which I only thought was a foul the other day because he didn't know what to give, uh, give the decision. Aye. Mm. Um, so I thought he just gave the foul to show you it. But then I seen that one today, and I thought, well, as you said, that I thought the guy was right over the top of him, and that's normally a foul. If a defender done that to a striker outside the box, that's that's a foul. Well, well I, so this uh, this was uh, the next point I was coming on to. It. Like, so there was um, like a number of fouls outside the box. So the uh, Kelly's number four, the boy that got booked and uh, he got booked in the first half, had given, I can't remember, it was like a, a, he sort of pushed him over. And there was less contact in that one, but it was a similar kind of contact that they were looking at. And there was a few of them in the game where players that came together, there was hardly anything in it and the ref was blown for a, a foul. And he said, there's no consistency there. It's like, if, you, if you're giving it a free kick on the touchline or at the halfway line or whatever, you, surely you have to give it when the boys caused the, the player to score an own goal with the contact. Yeah. Like, it... it uh, we should have defended better but, but, anyway. Like, do you know, like, I don't, um, I don't want to excuse the team so much, but, could, but... We should have defended it better, but what's Vinny many do when the boys over his back and it's almost just hit his head in there? Aye. Um, was there any, so that was 20 odd minutes was there, was there nothing really note before that and that was the first sort of real incident of the game and then um, we, we moved it, on and anything else happened in the half John? Depends how you define incident I thought I was quite pleased with the fact that Hibs opening opportunities in that bright opening spell uh, we'd had I think Venti's hit a shot just wide of the post I think Yuan's had one that's gone over the bar and we talked about it last week where 
we thought that that was something that Hibs were lacking, was having a crack at goal when they had the opportunity for range. And I'm talking for range, like it was like edge of the 18 yard or sort of stuff. So that was quite pleasing. I think I'd said about Emiliano and where I thought he would line up at the start of the game, like Matty said, he was kind of playing in like quite a creative roaming role. But then we've conceded that goal and it was almost, the way that I sort of looked at it was defenders have become complacent because they were like, well, boys up front are doing their job, like they're creating chances, maybe they'll score. And they just switched off and Kilmarnock scored, which seemed to be an all too familiar tale, just just for Hibs in general. Like it feels like so many times, not just under Montgomery, Johnson, whoever, it just feels like there's been plenty of games that I've watched um, going to see Hibs where they've had that bright opening, you think we're going to score at some point or we're going to win this game. And then the reverse is true. Like I don't really remember many chances for Kilmarnock in that opening sort of 20 minute spell. And then it was almost like their first attack. I think they'd had a couple of crosses in the box, but hadn't they put us under pressure? But then they have that one, and then it's boom, go. And you're like, fuck. And then I think, Matt, you'd maybe tweeted at the time saying that the, the heads had gone, and the heads had definitely gone at that point. Mm. However, as they moved into the second half, like I start, I think Hibs started to, started to get their act together, albeit not without conceding a shitty, stupid second goal. It was frustrating because the arse totally fell out of the team for a wee bit. And at, at that point, and obviously, like we know how the game panned out, right? So we have to take that into context as well and give credit where it's due. But at that moment in time, and then this year we back for Hibs, when we went to nothing down, and you're like, this game's gone for us. And the way that the team deals with adversity and has dealt with adversity this season is a big cause for concern. And this looked every bit like a bottom six performance. And even actually kind of getting the draw sort of papers over the cracks, I think. Like, I didn't think it was a good performance. There was good moments in the game and some good passages of play, but there was a whole load of the game where it was just shit. And that, that no being able to kind of deal, and so I say no being able to deal with it, they did eventually deal with it, but there was a wee bit of luck involved there, and there as well, Kelly going down to uh, 10 men. But no being able to, to, to reassert yourself in a game when you lose a goal and then having to kind of Hope you can get it back for 2-0 down. That's not going to get us where we want to be in the league. And it's two points dropped for a position where we were playing well to start the game. I, I worry. Like I, I don't think top six is absolutely nailed on for us uh, at, at the moment. I, based on the, the, the performances we're seeing, I, I, I think there's a... Saturday becomes huge when we play St Mirren. That is a massive yeah. game for us. And the day should have been a massive game as well because Kelly are... Uh, the home game. Uh, home, yeah. Kelly, the um, team we're fighting with now for for top six. Aye. So, so tell me about the second goal, their second goal, before we get on to the turning points and stuff. What, what, what was you said? It was a shitty goal, John. I think. I think it was just it was a long, it was like a, a cross from out on the the right hand touchline, if I remember rightly, and. I think it's maybe taking like a bit of a bounce in the box. And when I say a bit of a bounce, it's maybe coming sort of like penalty spot area, bounced and I think it was at Kennedy back post. So the ball's can like, it's almost like it's come from the right hand side and all of the defenders have just been completely unsighted for the ball, particularly Megwa at right back. And uh, I think Kennedy's come off his left shoulder and has kind of scuffed it in. I think Marshall could have. Potentially done better there as well. I seen like, it, it was a, it was a made. nothing. It was a nothing goal from a nothing ball, and like I say, it, it's it's led to us being two 0 down. So are, are we blaming? Are we blaming I, I don't like to blame individuals, but we're we saying Marshall is is at fault here, or is there more to it than that? Uh, more to it. So we should we should, we should stop uh, the ball coming in again. Do more more desire to stop the cross, but but uh, I mean the awareness of the back four. Uh, and, and Megwa in particular. So we, we saw it on Wednesday night when he got sucked inside um, for Rangers' first goal, and you know the boys the ball over the top and the boys in. He's he's far too central. Everybody misses the ball. Guys unmarked. Marshall's at, at, at fault as well. I just think it was a piss easy goal to score. Like for for Kelly, didn't have to work for it. It's just like a just whip it in and have somebody at the back post and you'll you'll yeah. score. When you mentioned the other night, it's great to me, Hibs goal. That sounds to me like a Hibs goal against us. Aye. Yeah. 
Is that, would that be right? Yeah, yeah. It, we've it's seen actually, it so many times. It was a wee bit reminiscent of the the early part of the season when we were so susceptible to crosses. Mm-hmm. And I thought we'd I thought we'd eradicated that from our game. Not not completely, because I know that there's like every team's susceptible to conceding a goal for a cross, but that seemed to be that seemed to have become one of our I'm reluctant to say strengths, but we've definitely stopped crosses. And today it was two goals for crosses. It was just suddenly like it was like going back in a time machine. But it was interesting right. that Megua was hooked straight away after it. I was just going to say, because then I'm, I'm looking at it and it was a triple substitution on 57 minutes. So was this the turning point in the game? These subs, was it good subs? I did see somebody saying Megua had got hung out to dry. Uh, and I, I think it was in a group chat. I read it somewhere. Um, but I see it, it, it was a triple sub. And then yeah. we scored quite soon after that, within 10 minutes. Aye, it's, it's, but so... I suppose you'd have to give credit because at the time I thought the the sub was awful. Like looking, so you're taking Venti off, you're bringing on Doidge, um, yeah. Mizani uh, came Yuan. on, yeah, for Yuan, Yuan. Yuan for Doidge, Venti for Melida, and Megal for Whitaker. It says on BBC. Yeah, are we going with with Melida? Are we going with Mizani? Is it? We'll go with Melida because I think you're mangling Mizian. Mizian, that's what I'm meaning. I, th- I think this is an age thing, like... John. I was thinking the other day, like, see, trying to remember the names of the signers. Like, so see, like, f- when when we used to sign players when I was like a kid or kind of teenager or whatever, I'd, I'd see it once and remember it. And now, and they're not particularly difficult names. i like, how am I not getting these? Even like, the, but... like if you were asked me who we signed today, ah. I, I could probably tell you that now. But for, between saying it at the start of the episode and now, I think it's an old, uh, uh, like an age thing. Yeah, well, I'm just losing it. Uh, and I'm maybe being a bit pedantic here, which isn't really like me, but is, is it no one's his first name and one's his fucking surname? Aye, but it the, 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 we the, go Deutsch. I didn't say Christian. Do you know what I mean? Like, no, that, that's you, true. But, discussing it? but I think because on, on, in the lineup, they've got him down as Mijani. Mijam. And on the BBC, they've got <gasps> my leader. So. My leader, right? I'm going with my leader because I'm just making an absolute arse of this and there'll be folks shouting at me through their. But then, but then, if you <laughs> play the BBC, haven't they got Jair doing either? They've got De Vega, Vieira, Tavares. Aye. So. I'd love it if someone's listening to this or an old motor and they're shaking their fist at the wireless. <laughs> I do well, but these fucking idiots didn't even care about their Well, I, I genuinely, I, I hold my hands up. I, I just say it's no deliberate thing and it's no any ignorance. It's just I'm struggling to remember it. <laughs> so, triple sub. Too many bumps in the heat. And triple sub and then we go on and score. And it was a bit of a beauty by the looks of it. The, again, grainy Twitter. Uh, on an iPhone, but uh, was there anything happened before that, or it was straight into the goal? Your goal, Joe, John. We talked to him about. It. I don't, I don't remember anything. I, like so, to go, what Matty said there about like being two 0 down and in the face. Remember of... fucking anything? Did, did you watch the game? I did watch the game. I'm just <laughs> not as fresh because I've not had the benefit of watching like <laughs> half a dozen replays to get the to get the finer details. I don't remember anything between. The second goal and Newell scoring because, as Matty suggested, and having been two 0 down before, like teams tend not to come back for that position. Like we've discussed it, you know, statistically and what have you before. And then out of nowhere, I think it was a cross into the box, and it was a wee bit head tennis. Falls to Newell running onto it, and he sticks in the top bins with his weaker foot. Beautiful goal. Jay had a chance. They right start the second half, ball over the top, we flick on, and he was throwing the keeper, and he just uh, delayed, uh, delayed his shot, and the defender got in. Probably should have done better, and he had another chance where he got a shot away from it inside the box. And this was just before Neil scored, because uh, as I was saying before we started recording, I was halfway through a tweet moaning that we'd, we were sixty-five minutes in and we had two shots when uh, when Neil pinged it in. It was like the uh, the Spartans goal against Hearts. Similar sort of range, sort of side foot yeah. just into the top corner. Uh, very yeah. similar sort of, uh, finish. It was a it was a beauty to be fair. And it, it came off a uh, Whitaker just whipping a cross in. It wasn't the, the, the best cross in the world. The defenders uh, got something on it and just knocked it up into the air for for Newell to run onto it. But a uh, brilliant finish, it, really. It looked good on what I've seen, but I watched sports scene later. To, to get the better picture of it. Well, from there then, did we were we then were we then the team to end the ascendancy? I see they got a man sent off. Did that was that a big factor in the the way the game changed, uh, Matty? 
Uh, it definitely helped. I, I don't know what you thought about the red card, John. I, I, I'm in two minds with it. At first, I thought, uh, well, I didn't think it was a red card when I watched it live. Do you know, when you saw the boy making the tackle on, uh, on Jair, it's about halfway line, and the referee played advantage. Um, and then when he got called, called, when the play stopped, they booked the guy, and then VAR intervened, and he slid in. And I suppose what's done him is his straight leg, and his studs have gone into Jair's ankle. Um, yeah. he's, but he gets a touch on the ball. It's one of these ones where I think if it was like even five or six years ago, that's probably a booking, or maybe not even a booking because he's played the ball first. Uh, nowadays, it's a red card. I just I, I don't think it would get. I don't think it would. He would get an appeal on it. Um, so it, it was significant because it changed how Kelly played. They, I mean, they were already sitting deep, but they just went a wee bit deeper. I thought and almost invited us onto them a bit. I assume McInnes will be getting heavy criticism for that on Kermanic Twitter as well. Um, so then, who scored the equaliser? My leader. All right, I talk me through it. There's a long ball forward for Levitt, and what was what I found quite impressive about it was that my leaders controlled it almost with his back to goal. I think what you were saying there about the about Kermanic playing deep, the two defenders have sat off him. And kind of allowed him and said, "Have a go." And he's, I think he's been a wee bit fortunate because he's shot. I don't know whether he was going for one of the corners, but his shots taken a little bit of a deflection. I don't know if that's maybe sent the keeper the wrong way because it's basically gone straight in, straight over the keeper in the centre of the goal. Uh, but at that sort of stage, and for where we'd come, you're not really bothered about how it goes in the back of the net. No, just it was still did. pretty early in the game. Eh? It was still a like good what ten minutes or so to go. Ah, uh, it was still um, so had time left to go on and win. He was brilliant when he came on, my um, leader. For, for all, I was a wee bit critical of him on uh, Wednesday night. He, he was, he definitely saw what he's about. Uh, the, the touch to bring the ball down and that, just just like the, uh, even like we, we, we talked about players no shooting from outside the box. I can't remember when that was, it last episode or the episode before or last two or three. Same, like we, we've, we've no, we've not had that, but both our goals today came for shots outside the box. And having somebody just with the kind of the wherewithal to look up and go, I'm just gonna, you know, put it in the top Guess corner almost. Keep, you know, keepers maybe no set and all that. Mm-hmm. Like with some of the shots, I've not seen it properly, but the, the, you know, that 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 sometimes an early shot's better than trying hit to it harder, get it harder, get it under control, hit it hard, hit it yeah. quick. Yeah. But it was a lot of lovely finish, and he he definitely looked uh, looked apart. And uh, you you get that these like him and uh, he and Emiliano are still some way away from that sharpness, I think, from from what uh, Montgomery was saying after the game. So promising, promising, aye, was it? Looks good. Um, and what about then? Uh, Ten minutes to go. Did we look like we were going to go on and win, or, we, or did we sit back? What happened? I think there was moments. I think there was definite moments where we. So what I'd say at the start was we had that open and bright spell kind of fell away as Kilmarnock got a couple of goals. But I think as we got a goal back, they had a player sent off and we'd, we'd equalise. I think there was definite, a definite impression the Hibs thought they could get an equalise. And I thought some of the football reflected that. And I think to add weight to that argument, there was a really good delivery for Paul Hanlon down the left-hand side that Dodge could have. I don't know if it would have been an equaliser or a winner. Man, it would have been the winner. Win, would have been the winner. That was, I want to say it was about the 84th, 85th minute. Um, but he's just I I don't know whether he's tried to direct What's it, that? but yeah. I, he's fluffed it. He's just he stuck it live, and it, it seemed to have been easy to score because he was in space. It was almost a a free header, inch perfect delivery for Hanlon. But I don't remember much in the way of better chances than that. Just good football, kind of like to try and put Hibs in a position to get a chance. Aye, that, that's a, a good summary. Yeah, Deutsch should yeah, have scored. I mean, it was a, a fucking really good chance. Eh? Like in. The, on, the, the commentary, by the way, the brilliant bit of commentary, and Kevin Harper was really good on, on commentary today for, for two particular moments. He banged his head at one point, which was good. He was telling us about banging his head in the wee commentary box. Uh, and the other time he says to Cliff, he says, what's that animal? And the game's going on. And, and Cliff had to really like, acknowledge it. First. He says, what's that animal? Is that a fox? That's a squirrel. <laughs> so... I don't know, I've seen a fox and a squirrel mixed up with each other before, and then had a wee joke about needing to go to Specsavers and all the rest of it. But uh, uh, 
Uh, they, they were saying yeah. that Do- Deutsch was unlucky because he, he was having to stretch so much to make contact with the ball, but I think they were being kind to him. I think he, he should have got on target yeah. and scored. I did see that. So that explains some of the message in the chat about uh, the miss, like how, how easy a chance it was. I didn't know who it was or what it was. I'm looking at the stats before we go into the talking points. We had quite a lot of 63% possession, 15 shots and five of those on target. It kind of dwarfed the commandment numbers. Did it, did it feel like that? you watching it. Five shots on target versus one, by the way, for us in our favour. Which I was quite impressed with when I seen that, but then <laughs> having just not seen the game and only seen a couple of the goals on Twitter and just been in a group chat that went fucking crazy, mm. I came out thinking we were maybe lucky to get a 2-2, but listening to you two, and then looking at the stats, it feels like maybe it was better than that, and it was just because we were 2-0 down that the ne- negativity was coming out. Would I be, would I be it's, fair in saying that, you think? It's maybe a wee bit like my suggested with regards to what we were doing that was really quite attractive. Like I thought we held onto the ball real well, but it was the the final pass that was letting us down. Like there was, and it wasn't even to be fair. Like it wasn't even always the the final pass. Like I'm thinking about like simple defensive passes. There was one of them for Fish to Levitt that seemed to be easy enough to just put like a yard in front of Levitt, but Fish managed to play it behind him, and that just kind of that just slows everything down because yeah. Levitt's got to check his run, he's got to collect the ball, he's got to try and move it forward again. So it was stuff like that. It was just, it was the difference between. In fact, there was probably there's probably arguments to say that it was there was similarities to like the Rangers game in terms of like there was some good football there, but the bits that let us down were the really critical, the really critical bits like defending a ball. We never done it on against Rangers. We never done it today. And Rangers and Kamarnik have put five past us, and we've got what two in response. Mm-hmm. I think where the negativity comes from, Colin, is the the, the reaction to the losing the goal, and and for how long that that lasted, because it was only really in the last couple of minutes of the the first half that we created anything again and started to look like we might get into it, and the uh, the start of the second half was a wee bit end to end, and then obviously Commander got their second goal. The Hibs didn't look like until we actually scored, and again that sounds like a stupid thing to say, but until we actually scored, we didn't really look like we were getting back into the game. It looked like one of those like a, a hips performance that we've seen that we weren't carving Kelly open, we weren't creating chance after chance after chance. Although the stats there obviously they didn't bear that out. I think see if we'd played like we'd played for the first twenty minutes, gone a goal behind and just picked up where we left off. Even mm-hmm. if we'd gone even if we'd lost a second goal against the run of play, but had still had that sort of the, the that attacking intent and still looked like we came what we were doing, folk probably would have went, We're a wee bit unlucky to be two 0 down. I don't think anybody thought we were unlucky to be 2 0 down when it when it happened because we were, we'd lost a sloppy goal, which considering the way that we we can see goals is is it's like death by a thousand cuts. There's very little patience for us losing goals like that. Now as soon as it happens, everybody's like fucking off the scale angry. Yeah. Um. So to, to to then lose another stupid goal, that's I think that's where all the anger came from. It's like the the all the games before this leading up to it, the fact the heads totally went. Because you look at the difference in reaction, even like I think how how I tweeted at the end that uh, two good goals, but nowhere near good enough. Like the that overall performance wasn't anywhere near good enough. But can contrast that to when we came back for two nothing down at Tiny, and we were buzzing at the end of it. And obviously it's a derby, so they've got like a different uh, context in it. But there's totally different moods, and I, I think the, the whole context to uh, how Hibs have been doing in the run up to the game. And that wee spell where we lost the heat um, plays into it. Because you should be quite happy, generally, coming back for 2 nothing down to salvage something. Normal. But it Normal. didn't feel like yeah. a good result today. Today feels like a bad result. <clears throat> I, I take your, your contrast point about like the, the 2 nil down at Tiny. Obviously, it's well documented I wasn't there. I was on the train home at that point when... When Hanlon scored, no, no, oh, I'm this talking about this, this season, John. Oh, when, when sorry, you talking sc- about this season. Oh, sorry, no, you definitely sorry. were there because we were cuddling. I was there, I, I was there for that game. Sorry, I thought it was a different game you were talking about. Like, I was going to say Straight that the context... fucking memory for his head with the sounds of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, that's still in my wank bank, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway, carry on. It was, it was a game I was two, actually two. 2 2 is the bet, though, for the correct score for us this season. Eh? We must be good 10 games, fucking like 2 0s. Um, anyway, right, talking points. We'll go on then because I'm spent about 45 50 minutes talking about the game, which is maybe longer than we intended. So I'll rattle through some of the talking points and you can maybe just interrupt me if you want to comment on it. Um, 
First one's for McBee, who says it was a good open in 20 minutes, fell apart after the goal. Again, not aggressive enough, closing space or going to the ball in midfield defence. Not a red card, beautiful hit from Newell, Deutsch has to score. My leader and Marcondes are class, but desperately need to address the defence. And Leon um, Rousseau says the defence is so bad, the second goal was terrible, the side is lacking real confidence. So they're both saying that with the defence. Um, I picked that up for you two actually saying the defence was poor, but you were talking about Ross is not getting closed down for the wide players rather than the defence, but anything to say about the defence? On the defence, I I think we defended all right for most of them, but it's the concentration that is the is the problem. So even if you look at the uh, the Rangers game, there was when we were under pressure for Rangers, we defended quite well for a lot of that game. And then have three absolute brain farts and and give three soft goals away. The day was the same. Like Kelly, you look at the stats. Kelly had one shot on target. Um, and I, I can't remember what you said off target. Was it five off target they had, or was it five? Yeah. yeah. Um. So that indicates a team that's defended pretty well. If you restricted the home team to uh, one shot target, but we can see two goals that and the goals that we can see over and over and over again. The defence definitely needs work. And, and, Sorry. Was it's it? because you have one shot on target with two goals. It's their own goal. Here, Aye. Aye. So, so there's definitely an issue there. The, the defence is a problem. In, I, I don't know how you, like how do you coach concentration? Like There must be a way to do it. because Was that not what he was talking about? The fatigue? Training with fatigue? Uh, uh, when they were in Dubai? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was talking about that. He mentioned that a few times in his interview. And I guess that's, that's what it is. Because it's decision making while you're tired. Con- or concentration, concentration yeah. yeah. All, all similar, similar things. I thought. I guess that's the way you do it. They need to go back to the high work at some more. Make decisions. Uh, um, Callum CMA says the manner of the performance and lack of reaction after Kelly's first goal is shockingly bad. Same problems with that midfield, and we are far too soft in every area of the pitch. Yes, we have clearly made good signings, but they are going to struggle in that setup. Um, Venti's plenty, Kelly. Only have two losses at home all season, so I guess it's a reasonable result. This question. I don't think we're much further forward under Montgomery than we were under Johnson. The result of having an itchy trigger finger on firing managers after manager give him time for the rebuild. Yeah. Further forward under Montgomery than we were Johnson. Jing John. John. I'm thinking. <laughs> I can hear. <laughs> I'll, think about that. I'll tell you what Jeff says for you think about it. right. Jeff Ashton should have won simple as that despite being powder puff for 60 odd minutes personally would not play both Jair and Yuan together leaves us too short defensively my leader and Emmy they're serious upgrades and hoping Amos and the other new ladder to both goals avoidable uh, Robert Cherry says please please give me a defensive call next week Aye. anyway so- back to the question John what's your thoughts <laughs> And I understand the point of the question, but it feels, and I think we talked about it on a, an extra time episode, and I'd, and I'd suggested that, I can't remember the episode, but I say to my something along the lines of, I don't know what he'd be drawn on it, because it feels like the natural conclusion is, well, if we're not any further forward, then we start having conversations about the next manager. Um, I think he said that, though. He, he, he's going to benefit from previous itchy trigger fingers. Mm-hmm. Need to rebuild. So I think he is saying that uh, when it's funny. Yeah. So and I think about like with regards to the squad, like how many players are in the squad just now? How many players are in the start level today that were part of Lee Johnson's team that were part of previous teams? Like and, and to come back round to the point I've made in other episodes, which was regards to time, like the the rebuild, the the clear out, all that sort of stuff. It's just not going to ha- going to happen overnight. We um. I'll not say who sent me the message, right? Somebody sent me a message earlier on the day because it was a WhatsApp and they didn't necessarily make it clear that they wanted it shared or no. Um, they just asked the question, who was our last really good signing? Like, really good signing that, that properly made an impact. Um, have, a, have a wee think of that, right? And, and tell, tell me... Well, I gave an answer, right? See if we come up to the, the same answer. But Colin, if I was to say to you who was the last really good signing Hibs made, um, uh, 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 you would have to think. Yuan's not a bad sign. It like like he's, he's, he's contribution. So no, no, bad is different from really good. So we're talking really good. Really good. Like, yeah. 
I don't know. I can't think I need I need more time to have a wee look back. I can't remember. Like where's what's away? Uh, so we did discount the ones that we've just signed because we've not seen enough of them. Like, because I think Emil, I, I think um, and just my, my own opinion, I think Emiliano is going to be like a player that we're talking about in years, and I wish we could have had him for another season. Or, or, or yeah. you know, obviously we didn't care what's coming with the Foley man. He he, he might not be a good signing compared to what's uh, down the line, but I, I suspect he's going to be one that that we are very lucky to have. Um, John, who who would you have picked out? Well, what would you define as really good? Or is it is it purely based on my own interpretation? I just did however you... The way I, I right. looked at it was... Well, it's based on your interpretation, unless you say you are, and then he tells you it's not really good. <laughs> but, but you defined it differently, because you said he was not being bad. And I, I just pointed out that no bad is different from really good. So... Um... If, if I was to go... I think you'd be going back a couple of years. I think you'd be going back to what you say, 2017, 2018, when we had that January sort of final day of the transfer window, Scott Bain, Dundee, uh, Scott Allen and Jamie Scott McLaren, Flor- uh, Canberry coming in, all that sort of stuff, because of the impact that they had during that season. I think after that, there's maybe an argument to be made that the last really good signing that we had was Joe Newell, and possibly because of that career arc that he's had playing for Hibs that culminated perhaps last year when he was player of the year. I said Beyond that, however, because because Nisbet came as and while he was here, got international and then got sold for a big profit. And, you know, he got capped and and he his goals helped us achieve something in the league. You know, and yeah. That, yeah. That, that's that that was a bad struggle <laughs> either side. I agree with you, John. I think the the, the couple that you picked it there were good. I didn't agree with Colin with you, and like I think that's. Uh... <laughs> On his day, if if we got on on his day, Yuan, on a time, aye, definitely, but aye, we didn't. Of course, but but then anything, Nisbet never had a good day every day either. But, no. So Chief Brody says anyway, <laughs> feeling a wee bit sorry for playing <laughs> Bob right? Rory looked shit scared. New players look good. Hopefully, we get a few <clears> more <throat> of that standard. I will we'll agree with that. Hibernian mm-hmm. Lone Watch, Christian Doidge. No, say we won't agree with that. We agree with the last part. I don't know if we agree with. Um, that Rory looks shit scared, but uh, I don't know if that's what you thought. No, I didn't um, look shit scared. No, no, nah. no, nah, not at all. Good. Um, I've been in Lone Watch, Christian Doidge. Would you keep him for the rest of the season at least? Offer something different to the others, John. Potentials could bring in, eh? Like, if I could just answer that, like, I... you know, if we're going to be bringing in players of the standard, I've not, I've only seen these boys once and used a raving about them today. If we're getting that standard player, then we would we, we need Deutsch. I guess it might depend on what happens in the remaining few days of the transfer window. I think the argument to keep Deutsch is that when he came on today, he did have that chance. What you'd be looking for is when he comes on, when he gets that chance, that he scores the goal. Because mm-hmm. I think his, I think he probably had the same sort of contribution today in terms of efforts and goal as Vente did. Venti's had his one for outside the box. I don't remember much else. Obviously, he had his no look Dodge on goal. But Dodge has had his chance and he's put it wide. So the output's the same and it is a different option. Like you're not I don't think we're putting in those sorts of balls for Venti to get on the end of. Good enough. Casuals attire says right backs aren't good enough. Players lacking any guts need to start getting stuck into teams more. New players look decent, so fingers crossed. We need to get the ball to the forward more. Passing it about isn't getting us anywhere. I think, like, if I could just take that one and then move on to the next one, the right back's not be good enough. They're, they're young, well, one very young boy and one youngish player there that's inexperienced. So I think that's maybe a wee bit harsh. But, um, See, just on that, Colin, neither of those two are a first choice right back. Is either, yeah. do you know, you've got uh, Cadden and Miller that are both ahead of them for the first team. Absolutely. Um, I, I think I don't know if this is Dave Graham saying this one in this week or if it was one last week and the week before, but individual errors letting us down. A couple of players need to drop out the start in the living. Hanlon is still our best defender. That's how I'm pretty sure we read that out last week. <laughs> um, Albert Street, why is open mic open mics such a hard listen? Jesus, I wanted to look myself after ten minutes of that very open area. I guess I don't know what look myself. I was typing there, but. Uh, I, I get the I get the sentiment. I know what it means. Um, I don't know what it means. Oh, I didn't listen to Open All Night. I can't understand that program. 
Um, Mark Loftus, Hearts fans wanted Naismith out and now those fuckers are romping third. Do we chase Montgomery out because there's no chance he's been able to field his best 11 consistently since coming in? Needs a run of games with them before he can be properly judged. you agree with that, my? I do. Right, so I think the point's good about the... Because Hearts fans all wanted Naismith but from almost the moment that he took over for the... Uh, Neil Smind had the kid on who's in charge thing as well, right? So there was yeah. like a farcical situation there. And Hearts weren't they playing particularly well, but they, they've they definitely turned it around and they look like a... I'm loath to say it because I hate giving them fucking credit, but they're deservedly clear in third. Like they, I think somebody had uh, shared on Twitter that it's in December they were four, they were a point uh, ahead of us and now they're like... I think it's not even 14 we now, We jumped right? them in the league. Maybe we Aye. jumped them in the league at one point. And yeah. so there's this huge gap now, and you have like a bit of an argument there about you because they need players to come back, and Shankland found a bit of form and, and that kind of thing. What you've got with Montgomery now is he's signing players that, on paper at least, look like they are going to improve the squad. You have to see how he does with them, uh, and and then see where we go and, and give him the chance to to improve. Yeah. Um... I'll just move on to Stuart here. I think we've got a few more to go. Probably got enough five minutes or so. Ah, you're fine. You get, get, get the last of them through. Uh, Stuart, Yuan and Jair need dropped. Whitaker and Meg were clearly not ready for the step up yet. Going to ruin their confidence if no defenders appear before the deadline day. Uh, we're in trouble dropping into the bottom six. You guys look class. You know, I'm not liking the criticism of the, the two young lads and, I, and I've not seen them. I just think, and I suppose that they're there to be criticised because they're in the first team, but yeah. we've got to give them a wee bit of leeway, right? They're 16 and 19 or whatever they are. Um, we've got to kind of try and look after them, which he's saying they're by going to ruin their confidence, but it's just... Um, it might, might be the making of them. Like the, the, This yeah. is part of the learning process, isn't it? And, and you learn far more through adversity than you do through Absolutely. the good times. So. Correct. Totally agree. You've got to learn more for playing than you are not playing. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's just as simple as that. Like, um, Anyway, Neil Waters, uh, not defending crosses into the box again. New players look good, but need game time to get matched up and used to the Scottish game. Good comeback, but need to kill teams off when on top in game. And a few things coming through about the... I think we've covered the no cro- not defending crosses, but a few comments come through about the new players looking good. Promising. Uh, Pat Fry's image, fix the defence, and that is only possible if we get new players. Seem to be uh, seem to speed up in the second half, and new players impacted. But fix the defence for coming over again. William Graham, definitely the new keeper. Um, Kowalski1875 says, Is it time to drop Jair? John, what would you do there? I think I criticised criticism, him the other night and I got the, the take the goal in the last game. I thought there was a couple of moments for Jair today. There was one one cross first half that he's that he's over I think Venti's collected it over on the right hand touchline. He's been on the receiving end of the challenge. I thought his contributions were largely positive, but just not enough. And I don't know whether that's because he's not getting the ball or if he's not showing the ball. But one of the other uh, listeners had sent a question about whether Yuan and Jair should both be dropped. And to that I'd say, who replaces them? I, I, I don't know who the automatic replacements are at this moment in time. And I think it might be that they're playing at the moment out of necessity. I'm not sure who's on the bench. Actually, was, uh, so you got my, my, lead, my leader would, would, would come in. So he he's an upgrade. I think that's a good point, John. Is is are they playing because there's nobody else? Yuan's forms up and down. Like even within a game, he's, he's up and down. I didn't think he was very good against Rangers. I don't think he was very good today. But he'd have no complaints of get, getting taken off. There was, I'm sorry to interrupt, there was a, a moment today where he's, he's, Hibs are on the counter attack and he's running forward with the ball and he's beat a guy. And I'm sure that there was, I'm sure Jair was free down the left hand side. Someone was free down the left hand side. And what he's done is, he's not tried to beat another player, but he's ended up collecting a foul because a boy's just blocked him off. But it's just, it's just completely killed the game rather than passing the ball. And I think this is the, I think this has been a regular frustration, a regular criticism. And I get that he tries to be positive, but sometimes there's definitely an easier ball to play. Yeah, 100%. That is my biggest... I've, I've complained about him here weeks ago, but that's the options that he takes. Mm-hmm. Like, if he could if he could get his decision-making, uh, improve that, he, would, he wouldn't be here for very long. But his, his decision-making isn't great. Aye. And the amount of times you go, oh, I can't pass. It's, uh, it's quite incredible. 
Uh, David Anderson, overall a 2-2 draw isn't a bad result, but feels like a chance missed, considering it felt like we gifted them both of their goals. Defence is still brutal. However, if we get some bodies in before the window shuts, I think we'll come good. I think this is an overwhelming team here. Mm-hmm. We, we are signing players, but they also need to be midfielders and central players. Like to get John's point, we've not really changed the defence yet, and we've still got the wide players. We've just got more options through the middle. It's um, it is funny that we the, the the theme about the no reacting to, or or reacting badly to going two goals behind has come out because that's what happened. But at the same time, they clawed it back. It, it, it's it's like such a weird thing to say to a team who. Have come back for two goals down. Should fight. Should hurt. Aye, yeah. to to sort of still criticise them for lacking it, but it's yeah. I think it still feels appropriate to do it. I don't know. It's such a weird contradiction. So on that, Stephen Nicholson said Hibs described it on Twitter as a brilliant comeback. How far have we fallen that Hibs described Hib- that as brilliant? I still think Monty won't be there in twelve months. I'd happily get proven track record manager and Derek McInnes. No more project, etc. McKenna's chucked away a two goal lead there. So I, I was going to I was going to say this earlier. I, I think Matty, did you suggest that? Did you suggest that Kilmarnock had dropped deeper and deeper as the game had progressed? Yeah. Aye. I, not, I with, think... not the the stand the, the center off notwithstanding. Mm-hmm. And I, I and I remember. So I think that was the criticism of, if I remember rightly, it was Pat Lydon. So you'll probably remember a few games where we went a couple goals a couple goals up early doors. But then as the game progressed, it almost became like backs to the wall defending. It wasn't particularly enjoyable. And eventually he left. So as much as McInnes and Kamarnock are ahead of us at the moment, I had this thought to, to myself during the game. Is that the sort of performance? That is, is, is McInnes a manager that we want to see? Or would we see two goals up early doors and then defending quite deeply for the rest of the game? I don't think that's an improvement one on where shot, we are. One shot on target, by the way. See the Kamarnik looked like the, but I suppose we did as well, right? Apart from the the, the period in the game where we lost the heat, and then we didn't look like we knew what we were doing. But when we started well, we looked like we were adherent. The players knew their roles. They knocked the ball about well. Kamarnik, uh, to their credit, knew how to defend against it. Um, but they defended deep right for the start. There was like, uh, there was times if we go into their box, it was almost. Every Kilmarnock player, but it felt like every Kilmarnock player was sort of crowding that eighteen-yard box to make sure we weren't going to get any, uh, any, any chance out of it. And that's effective to a point. Obviously, we we did manage to get uh, two goals. There's probably a halfway house, isn't there? Like if if Kelly hadn't gone down to ten men, it would have been interesting to see whether they could have seen, seen the game out. And you'll never know that. So although you can see, I uh, can we kind of chucked away the two goal lead, and, and he did. Would that have happened if it had been 11 v 11 for the uh, the full game? I don't know. But let the Atlantic team not beat this Hibs team this season. No. And Montgomery's been the manager of three games. Um, Terry Jack is concerned about the youngsters playing and what will become a toxic Easter road if results don't improve. Um, did I read out David Anderson's one, which was overall a 2 2 draw isn't a bad result? Ah, you did. Like I did right. So Kenny McTee then. Is the club, it's a similar point again, although it's the second one on this front. So, is the club in denial that we need a keeper and defenders? Hope to goodness there's deals that will be concluded, but if half that, half, but if half of decent new signings had been defensive positions, we wouldn't be in the mess we are. Don't think Marcondes and Amos have played as shit the pitch at Kelly. That's Kelly. So, this is the second one about the keeper. Was, was Marshall that bad today? I know you made the city give them better for the goal, but. He's been all right recently, is he not? I was going to say up until I think did we say that he was? Oh no, he was at fault for the the third Rangers goal, and he was at at least partially at fault for today. It was part of an accumulative set of mistakes. Prior to that, I think he'd be gaining a lot of plaudits, especially like looking at the Aberdeen game where he had umpteen shots at him and he's he saved them all. I think I think he'd done pretty well against Livingston. Has there been a penalty saving there? So no, like. He's he's done pretty well recently, and I don't know whether it's that sort of like recency of mistakes that's making us think yeah, that we need a new keeper. Like but Aberdeen at start of December, I think I can't remember mm. for others. But additionally, he's also thirty-eight. Like, how long is he going to be around? What what is the what's the succession plan? Yeah, well, Murray Johnson it was on the bench today, wasn't he? So I guess he's the. And we've got the other one away at the Yeah, I think mm-hmm. we need to keep it in. Um, and we definitely need uh, defenders. But Montgomery's talked about um, 
nearly signed the centre half. Definitely an area the club are looking at. Um, one fell through. I think there's potentially one going to come at the start of the week that they were talking about very, being very close to signing. So I, I think yeah. club are very aware of where the, the gap is. The problem with right back is we're oversubscribed once uh, Miller well, and Cadden are, are back. Then, um, what oh, did you see that? Aye, it's because you stuck your thumb up. Aye, I put my yeah. thumb up and, and uh, the screen that, copied it. <laughs> no, it's not there then. Uh, That's going to make for a good thumbnail. Aye. <laughs> aye, better than the one from earlier. Um, I've lost my chain of thought there. Sorry, because I put my, uh, my thumb up. If, if we bring in a right back, then we're going to end up with five because we've brought Megla back. We need to end up like five for that position, which is too much for for a club of our size. You, you didn't want five right backs. Agreed. Um, well, just the last couple. There is maybe three or four more here. Um, Christopher Bonnie, I'd normally be annoyed as reckon we could have won that one if not for sloppy defending. The Royal Rumble tonight. Just on a good mood. It was a good fight back to get the two goals for the draw, and I'm hoping for a fire is lit under the national of the players for St Mirren. Royal Rumble, eh? Not me. Right, anyway, <laughs> Michael. Uh, <laughs> Seemed on top to conceding a poor goal standard. New signings clearly a step above what we had before. Hopefully, can now do the same without the defence. They should be all good. Fucking hell, it's just overwhelming. Eh? Uh, Gaza, is Jair and Yuan the weak link or team together? So, I think we've probably covered that. Like, there's not really anybody to replace them at the moment as well. Um, and I think, aye, I don't know if there's any more to add on that. Um, GGPTH, he says, Actually, it looks like he's replying here. So I'll start with the bottom one, which is the new signing looks good. Just hope they come back stronger next week. Defence needs seriously look that like. Plus, not saying it's good to draw, but coming back from 2 0 down when it's usually us. But lose on the end there. Aye. That's what he means there. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh, Hibs on tour. Out of jail today against 10 men. Got to be happy with that point after being 2 down, but mostly the same pitch on display. And the last one, Keith Robertson, lucky to escape with a draw. Had VAR on their side when it looked a yellow was sufficient. Really like Mizian when he came on. Uh, still lots to sort out with the, within the team, but hopefully the new additions in time will address the issues. And I'm not saying what he says about Derek McInnes at the end. Because he's in trouble with the orange order. Oh. Um, was it that he's so, been on the sunbeds? Because he definitely has, <laughs> by the way. It was related to sunbed and yeah, the colour is, yeah. There was a there was a moment where the, the camera went to the Kelly bench and he was sat down and there was like like pasty bald white guys uh on either side of him and then there's McInnes with like a resplendent tan just sitting in the middle. <laughs> Did Kelly go to Dubai by any chance? Or I don't know, Mc, McInnes sunbed, looked man. McInnes looked like he just went directly to the sun. <laughs> Aye. Right. <laughs> just that. Um I think I think that's probably enough. Aye. Um we've got we'll be back. Wednesday with extra time and Thursday with week at Hibs we've not quite decided on that extra time topic yet but we will have one uh, for you on Wednesday morning um, thanks to those that subscribe and if you want to subscribe you go to hubwave.net Hub yes or or Patreon, Patreon, Patreon. Or, <laughs> or you can do it on our YouTube members place now as well uh, join the ever growing band there and um, you can get it all from our Twitter bio Thanks for joining us. Thanks to Whiskey Row, and we'll see you next time. Well, they tell me now when I broke free, I drank all the whiskey in Tennessee. I don't drink water, no.